Welcome everybody. This is a bonus part three to my uh, was a two part series, but now it's a three part series on how to create a water fountain in Unreal Engine. So if you watch the first two parts, you notice that we created a water fountain and we were driving that water fountain using a blueprint. Um, in this quick uh, third part, what I'm going to show you is how to drive and animate uh, some of that behavior using the audio sound from a wave file. So very much like an equalizer would. So I'm just gonna get right into it. I'm not gonna cover every little detail, but I'm gonna hopefully cover enough. And if you have questions, let me know in the comments. Okay, so here we go. So if you remember from the last time we had a blueprint, that was our fountain and uh, it contains our Niagara particle uh, system and I created a static mesh. So the, the one thing that I changed on this is I created a function called update on this, um, on this actor. And within this function, let me show you, it's a little crazy, but the update function carries a several parameters that I pass in. One's called scale, force, color, mist is for the mist color, and lastly is the rotation. So I did a lot of playing around with this, so I'll show you what I have here. But basically the way this works is every time you call update on this actor, it's going to take the scale you pass in, which I'm assuming, you know, just because I wrote it, I know what the values are. Uh, it's be it's between zero and one. Um, and uh, that's gonna be applied to the Z plane of the actor, uh, the static mesh within the actor. So as the sound is playing, we're gonna scale the square here taller or shorter. So that's the first thing we're doing. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to be passing in the min and the max. We did this in the last video, but the min and the max force that's going to get applied to shoot the water up. And so we can control that based off the sound. We're gonna pass in the colors of the, uh, the water particles themselves in the mist. And the very last thing is, and in this case, I'm actually not using this, but you can pass in the, uh, like the rotation of the cone. So in our case, I'm just gonna be shooting the water straight up and down. Um, let me show you the next part of this. So what you need to do in order to get the, the equalizer uh, frequency data is you need to enable synesthesia. Let me, let me pull it up in the editor for you. Let me uh, pull this up real quick. So you have to edit, uh, enable this plugin. Go to plugins, go to audio, and it's this one right here, audio synesthesia. You need to enable that, you'll probably need to restart. So once you have that done, let me go back. Once you have that completed, then if you right click in your uh, content browser, if you go to sound, you should have analysis and you can create a synesthesia NRT and a settings file. So what I did was I created two settings. Um, the first one is right here. And um, I created that synesthesia file. I used the, actually in this case, I created my own settings. So if we go look at that, so this settings file I created, it's basically the same as the default settings. That's this right here. So I created it, I'll show you what it looks like real quick. But it basically has some parameters you can set in here. Oh, it looks like maybe I did adjust this. Yeah, I adjusted it to 20, 20 bands instead of 48. And I adjusted this to five from, I believe 12. And the analysis period, I, I reduced down to 0.11. So in your synesthesia file, 
you specify a settings, and you specify the WAV file that you want it to analyze. So I had a WAV that I downloaded from YouTube uh, from their free audio library. It's called A Ghost Town. You can look that up if you want. It's by, I'm going to massacre this person's name, but it's Quincas Moria. Qu Quincas Moria. Anyway, A Ghost Town. Um, so then what I do is... If I go back to my, um, the next thing I did was I have multiple fountains created. So I created 20 fountains in a line, okay? And what I did is I wrote another blueprint class called a just equalizer. And what this is really is like a controller uh, that's going to be driving each of the fountains. So let me show you what I do. I tried to clean this up so it didn't look too crazy. So on begin play in this actor, the first thing I do is I grab the sound that we're gonna be using. I created a variable called sound. This points to my ghost town wave. So that sound I set to the audio component that I created in this actor. So the only components this uh, actor has, if this controller is a, uh, is an audio component. So I set the sound on there and then I grab the duration of that sound. So if it's like two minutes long, I grab that duration. I'll show you why that's important. The next thing I do, and this is slightly complicated, and I may have done the math wrong, but I think it works out just fine, is I grab a list of all of the actors. And the reason I'm doing this is I wanna sort them from left to right based off of their y-axis um, and that way I know that the frequencies I'm applying are in the right order um, so you can look at how I did this but I grab all the actors I store them into an array called bars I grab the length of that subtract one so I have 20 bars so I go from 0 to 19 and for each of the bars, I this is the crazy sorting algorithm I do. So sorting arrays in blueprints is horrible. Uh, it's way easier to do in C++, but uh, I believe this does work. So based off the Y values, if this Y is greater than the other, then I, I call the swap function on the bars. And I basically cycle through all of them and do a swap on them. Um, and this is essentially a bubble sort. Uh, you can go look it up. I think I did this correctly, um, but seems to work out okay. So you can, you can look up that. Yeah, that's basically bubble sort is what that is. And the very last thing that I do is for the audio component that I have here, I bind uh, the audio playback percent event. So as this, as the audio is playing, this event is going to get continuously fired. And I'm going to show you that within this, we're then going to update our fountains to change the velocity and the colors uh, of what they're uh, what they're playing. So. After I call the bind, I wait for 10 seconds, and then I call play on my audio thing. So once the, once the scene starts playing, then what happens is, uh, let me take you through this, this event here. I take the playback percentage, so let's say it's 1%. I multiply that by the duration, and that's the current play time that I'm at. So that lets me know where I'm at within my audio. And I store that to a variable. Moving on, I call this as a key function. It's called get normalized channel constant Q at time. So using an analyzer variable and the playtime that we calculated, this analyzer right here is a variable that I have and you see that the default value for it is the 
synesthesia NRT that I created earlier. And within this NRT, it's associated with the music called the ghost town. So we are reading that analysis uh, component and we're calling a function on it to get me a list of all of those frequencies. And what comes out of here are is an, an array of floats which are scaled because it's normalized from zero to one. And those floats, there will be 20 of them because we have 20 bands. For each of those, we loop through and we are going to call update. Remember the update function I wrote on each of my fountains? Let me scale way over here. I'm gonna call update on the fountain. Now, where did I get the fountain, right? Because I have 20 fountains. I got the fountain by referencing the array that I created earlier. So when I called get all actors, I stored that into an array. And then based off the index, so these are sorted in the right index. So as we're looping through, I grab index 0, 1, 2, 3. And we're grabbing each of those actors. Then we're calling update on it. And what we're doing is because the array element here is the normalized weight of that frequency, I take that number, let me scoot way over here, I take that number and I use it to drive several of my parameters. So the first parameter is the scale. And remember, that's the one that makes the box grow larger or taller. I take this, which is 0 to 1, and I multiply it by 5. So my, the scale of my boxes will grow from, uh, grow from 0 to 5, possibly. The next thing is I take that 0 to 1 value and I multiply it by a parameter that I, that I set on the Blueprint Actor itself. The default value of this is how high, how strong I want the water jets to shoot. And I just apply that. So we have scale, force, color, and mist are next. Rotation, I just pass zero. So color and mist, pretty simply, I take the... I take the, uh, what am I doing here? Uh, oh, you know, in some of my cleanup, I believe I messed something up here. I did indeed. So we'll pass this in here. So if the value is less than, let's say 0.8, Right? Remember, it can go from 0 to 1. If it's less than 0.8, it's going to show a red. Um, but otherwise, it's going to show a white. Okay, And so we grab that, that uh, color, and we're going to pass that in to our... Um, I have some parameters here to do glow, uh, a glow on the uh, how strong you want the color to be. So I do some multiplication here. Uh, the default here is this. I clean some of this up to try to make it not look as messy. But uh, I think I messed a few things up when I did it. So we do glow. And then for the mist, I reduce its opacity down by 1.2. So basically, we're multiplying those colors to either make them really bright or a little less dim. I pass all those in. So then when I go ahead and run this, oh, we're in the pause time. You'll see what's gonna happen here. So you see how the strength of the water fountain is higher, the higher that the, uh, the bar is. Right, pretty neat, right? So. This is kind of like your equalizer, and the water is kind of following the same pattern. So as the music plays, it's reading those values and updating. See it every... Pretty cool, huh? 
I thought it was neat. Um, once again, Unreal Engine does not disappoint. They give you a lot of capability to, uh, you know, to do these sorts of things. There's a variety of different ways to read this type of audio data. And this was the one that I found that worked for me. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, uh, please subscribe below. I'm growing and uh, I really appreciate all the wonderful feedback I've gotten from you all. Thanks again. Uh, have a great and safe day. Talk to you later. Bye.